How many of you have had an interesting two years? <laughs> so every Thursday from noon to one, we log on for our uh, networking webinar. Over 500 school directors and superintendents from around the state are registered for that event. Some of you I haven't had a chance to meet because you've come to your school boards um, since COVID and I see your names in the queue and in the registrant list and it is a pleasure to meet each of one of you. I want to see you. Please take a moment to say hi and introduce yourself during the conference. Let's talk a little bit about what we've been through in that time. On Friday, March 13th, 2020, everyone went home from school and our world changed. We had no idea what the next days, weeks, or months would bring, and we had no idea how our own leadership would need to transform. We're going to take a look for a few minutes at 125 things that our school directors have had to address during the past 21 months. 125. Let's just recognize that for a second. We went back through the agenda of all of our networking calls and said, okay, first came this. Oh, ooh, then that came. Oh, and then this happened over here. And then we learned more about this. We put it together. Until going through this exercise and writing this speech, I, I would have guessed maybe 40 things, 50 things, very highly impactful. But you did this. From that day, we had to figure out how are we gonna feed the children? What are we gonna do with our staff? How are we gonna run payroll? What do we do if staff are not actively engaged in meaningful work? And then we had some MOUs, right? <laughs> what we needed our employees to do changed and your leadership transformed. We learned about continuous learning, paper packets, Zoom, Zoom bombing, that's fun, right? <laughs> yeah, so we learned how to do the registration link in Zoom, absolutely, and we learned what a waiting room is. We learned about connectivity, hotspots, negotiated cable company contracts, learned about digital equity, and then some more MOUs. Yeah. How we were able to teach our students changed and your leadership transformed with it. Then came the first of many changes to OPMA, right? Um, later I will show you my tattoo that says OPMA. We learned how to deliver virtual special education, virtual OT, PT, virtual speech. We all learned what compensatory services mean. Then we had to figure out childcare. We had emergency rules on grading, instructional time waivers, and the federal waiver on standardized testing. How we were able to teach our students continued to change and your leadership continued to transform with it. We analyzed the COVID-19 impacts on property tax collections. Um, we looked at DOH graduation guidance, virtual graduations. Personally, I attended several graduation parades. You found a way to make it happen for those kids. Then came some more changes to OPMA. Then continuous learning plans, higher education's interpretation of grades, summer athletic and activity guidance, summer meal programs, the CARES Act, the reopening Washington schools work group, and then more changes to OPMA. Then we heard about this thing called ESSER 1, and what is that going to look like? How is, is that really going to bridge the gap? And don't worry, because it came up with a 2 and a 3 to go along with it. <laughs> then we took a look at transportation funding. How do we keep our drivers employed and engaged in meaningful work if our apportionment for transportation is based on ridership and the buses are delivering meals, not students? Then came the Safe Start Washington plan, and we learned what a county phase meant, whether you're in phase one, two, or three. Does that pertain to school districts or not? Then came the DOH decision-making tree, and we all learned what a rate per 100,000 is, <laughs> right? And then we're scratching our heads saying, okay, so are we low, moderate, or high risk, and does, are these things requirements or suggestions, and if it's a suggestion, are we still gonna have insurance if we don't follow the suggestion? Hybrid instruction. We had to pivot in most districts in 72 hours, taking decades of what our staff and our teachers and our paraeducators have done to support kids and pivot in 72 hours. That was a heck of a weekend. I was in many of your board meetings. Some of you met till three o'clock in the morning on a Saturday trying to figure that out. Then we learned what asynchronous learning is. Then we had some more MOUs. Yeah. 
the rules outlining what we could and could not do changed. And as frustrating as it is, you dug in and your leadership transformed. We navigated PPE supply chain issues, emergency rulemaking on the definition of an absence in a hybrid environment, furloughs, layoffs, reduction in force. My grandfather taught me something very special. He said, if you ever have to part ways with somebody and you don't lose sleep over it, you don't deserve to make that decision. And you made some very challenging decisions about having to right size your staff. Luckily, many of them have come back, some have not. But that brought up the shared work program, USDA food service waivers, enrollment concerns, a new term called pods, independent tutoring companies, and yes, more changes to OPMA. The DOH risk assessment dashboard, now we can see where everybody else's rate per 100,000 was. We started figuring out COVID-19 testing in schools, and we advocated for pandemic EBD, EBT cards. Problems arose, options were weighed. The situation was constantly evolving, but through your continued focus on how to best meet the needs of your students, your staff, and your community, your school districts transformed. And that just brings us to the first day of school for the 2021 school year. <laughs> By this point, we learned more about the challenges we faced. We had grown as leaders and we had learned so much about our own resolve. The new year brought new challenges. Are we hybrid or are we online? We had the K-12 schools 2021 guidance document. We figured out cohorting and social distancing and masking and health screening. I remember the call on a Thursday. 150 of you were saying, how on earth, when it's raining outside, are we going to get 800 kids through a health screening to get into the school? And you figured it out. And not only did you figure it out, but once that requirement was lifted, many of you said, what we've learned is we can staff it. And the benefit is that each and every student in our district is met by a smiling, caring member of our staff. And many of you are still doing that greeting. We learned to navigate the Department of Health symptom evaluation flowchart. <laughs> Didn't think we'd be doing that, huh? We navigated PE requirements for hybrid and online models, the WIAA's return to play guidelines, employer health and safety requirements, this dynamic between the State Department of Health and county health officials, and then school districts in the middle making sense of the nexus. And then, more MOUs. Our ability to provide in-person instruction changed and your leadership transformed. We took a look at the Institute for Disease Modeling Projections, DCYF's child care grants. We got a transportation funding hold harmless bill and more changes to OPMA. Then DOH quarantining requirements, more state guidance on in-person instruction, the governor's proclamation on the phased reopening of Washington schools, healthy Washington sport and activity guidelines. And if it sounds like a lot of these are the same thing with different names, they are. <laughs> but they're each just slightly different. And there's a few ways to look at this. Jeff Henderson wrote a book called Know What You're For. And you've heard me talk to leaders around the state about the strength in leadership and identifying what you are for. And yes, these documents are the same, only slightly different with a different title. And we can speak out about being against what they say or against the way things change, but as our knowledge and growth and movement through this pandemic has evolved and we've learned more, the guidance has changed. And so I choose to channel my inner Jeff Henderson and speak about what we're for, which makes a big difference in what we're against in this. And I am so appreciative of your leadership in doing the same. And we've seen tremendous examples around the state of that. Then we had the Washington vaccine distribution, the get ready plan. We had requirements for K-12 performing arts, updates to the K-12 schools 2021 guidance, and then ESSER II. We had child nutrition program updates and emergency waivers for graduation requirements. Things started to open back up and more options were on the table. Once again, your leadership transformed. You had a district reopening progress report we had vaccine prioritization for school employees. You remember phase 1B1? <laughs> one? 
We were assessing learning gaps. We had the DOH review of the health and safety requirements and an update to that. Then we had the governor's proclamation on children's youth and mental health crisis. We went from you cannot have kids in school to you must provide five days a week in-person option for all families. And you transformed. Then we had ESSER three. And then not to forget about our favorite acronym, more changes to OPMA. We had updated guidance on physical distancing, continuous learning 2.0, flexibility on IDEA timelines, the SAT, the ACT, AP testing modifications in a hybrid environment, the definition of high-risk employees, and then again, more MOUs. The guidance continued to change and your leadership continued to transform. We had K-12 COVID-19 requirements now for the summer of 21 and into the fall of 21 and 22, a new document. We had academic and student well-being recovery plans, redistricting based on the census data, the FCC emergency connectivity fund, State Board of Education rules on instructional hours and graduation, Senate Bill 5044 with equity, diversity, and inclusion training. We had discussions about equity within a divided community. We had masking at in-person board meetings. We had continuous learning 2.0 versus ALE and the ALE funding components brought back into play. We had more updated guidance from DOH on requirements for 21 and 22. And then the big discussion about the realization that masking at school is not a local decision. That was a fun conversation, wasn't it? <laughs> we ended the 2021 school year with the hope that all students in our state would be able to be back in person in September. Your continued commitment to working through the myriad of changes was nothing short of heroic. And that brings us to the first day of school for this year, for the 21-22 school year. And despite all that they had been through, our students and staff showed up on the first day of school with smiles on their faces under their masks, but you can still tell when they're smiling by looking at their eyes. And they wanted to learn and the teachers wanted to be there and the staff wanted to be there. And it felt good. Then we had masking protests and vaccine mandates, and we learned about medical exemptions and religious exemptions and vaccine protests and contact tracing and quarantining and outbreaks and classes and buildings needed to be shut down by local county health officials. We experienced the loss of communicable disease insurance coverage in our state for school districts. We had a new DOH data dashboard. We had continuous learning 3.0, more guidance from DOH, the return to learn programs, staffing shortages, modifications to bus routes, masking and athletic events, passionate Board meetings. <laughs> We're just going to put that right over here and call that passionate board meetings. We had accommodations for employees with vaccine exemptions, additional continuous learning 3.0 guidance, the test to stay program, and now where we stand today, we have vaccine availability for all ages in K-12. During all of this, you still conduct, conducted superintendent searches, you passed levies and bonds, you built buildings, you adopted new policies, you created new programs, you implemented social emotional learning, and you never lost sight of your primary mission of doing what is best for the children you serve. It has been, yeah, give yourself a round of applause for that. I've been in public education for 25 years, never, ever did I imagine a year like last year or a year like this year. Many of you have been in education longer than me. Some of you are just getting started and welcome because there is no better time than right now to be a leader in public education. You are doing it and it's not easy and it doesn't always feel good and it's exhausting, but you show up and you're doing it. It's been both a short while and an eternity since that Friday back in March of 2020. The leaders we were then are not the leaders we are now. We have been tried, tested, stretched, and grown. We truly have transformed in ways that we never could have imagined. As I stand here before you today, I see the strongest, most committed group of educational leaders this state has ever had, ever. And while we may not know what happens tomorrow or next week, or next month, the one thing that I can guarantee is that together we will continue to transform and we will never stop searching for that next solution to whatever challenge is laid out before us. We will continue to wake up each day, look in the mirror, 
and say, today I will lead as if this is the day for which I will be remembered. Thank you for all that you do. You are an incredible group of leaders. You've got this, and we've got you. It's an honor to serve you. Thank you.